After having analyzed the regression statistically, we can continue with our econometric analysis and thereby we therefore we start with uh, having a look at our coefficients or at our only coefficient which is minus 1.34 of the uh, variable population growth. So in fact that is exactly what we uh, expected it to be in the beginning. It's negative so population growth has a negative influence on GDP per capita which is the case here. Let's have a look whether uh, the variable is also econometric, economic, uh, from an economic point of view, um, significant. Um, so what this says is that if our population growth over our uh, time span of 20 years is 1% higher than our income level of the country is 1.34% lower, which sounds reasonable. And at the same time, is uh, certainly economically uh, significant. Note that the change of the dependent variable is in percentage since we have used the logarithm of GDP per capita. And the change between two uh, logarithmic values is always the difference in percent. When doing an economic analysis of a regression, be also aware of the aspects of causality and its effects. For example, in our model, one could argue that there is not only a causal relationship between population growth towards uh, GDP per capita, but also vice versa. Namely, uh, if a country has a high income level, then it certainly has a pension system, and that takes care of uh, people's uh, financial situations in, uh, when they retire. So people are less prone to getting children instead of uh, their pension system. But if uh, that is the case, then uh, ordinarily squares estimation would be inconsistent. We can see that when going back to the gauss markov assumptions. Um, suppose that uh, we have a not only a causal relationship between our regresses x on y, but also vice, vice versa. That would mean that if we have, for example, a big shock in our error term, then we have a higher value of the dependent variable, certainly. But if we have uh, an inverse relationship on our x values, then we also get a high values for x in the, sa in the, the same time of the shock. But that would mean that in the case of a shock we also have uh, increasing values of uh, our regressors and that again would mean that x is certainly correlated with the error term and that is a violation of rule number three and that would lead to an inconsistent estimator of ordinary squares. In that case we can cope with this problem by using instrumental variables but that topic will be uh, a topic of our one of our next sessions. Thank you and bye bye.